so storing all of your data onto something, if it's hard drives, if it's external hard drives, if it's network attached storage devices, once you get into video editing, you end up with a lot of media and it takes quite a lot of space if you're filming on the regular and trying to store it all in its original quality. And with that, we have to think about actual storage systems and trying to come up with something that is going to be reliable and that I can trust it's always going to have my files. I personally made a video a few years ago talking about my storage solution for post-production and what I like to use and I am still using pretty much the same exact equipment to this day, little updates here and there, but I noticed that that particular video was more set up for a DIY or someone that actually wanted to go and buy equipment, assemble it. I noticed something when I created the recent videos talking about the cloud stores by Blackmagic Designs and the simplicity of it being able to get it out of the box and using it right away. My video definitely wasn't uh, like that. You had to have a little technical know-how or willingness to learn. The company that's behind TrueNAS actually make a bunch of pre-built systems. So I want to get my hands on that and see what that whole process was like. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on a system and then I just looked through the manual and I followed the manual to get everything set up. Super easy. I had one that already had four terabyte drives. So this particular unit holds uh, three and a half, five of them. They already came in the chassis or their little sleds. So you just have to slide them in. The operating system is already installed on the system on an NVMe that's inside. I think it's an NVMe. If it's not, it's an SSD. Uh, and you just have to plug it in. In the back of the manual, it gives you some credentials to log in. Logged in, and it's what I'm used to seeing, which is TrueNAS. And all you have to do from this point is take all of those drives. You have to make them as what is referred to as a pool. So we're just take, telling the uh, system that we wanna take all of the drives that I have and get them to work together. A lot of people know this as what is referred to as a RAID. And all that's doing is just taking all of your drives and then you're telling the system how many drives you wanna have uh, uh, for parity data. So if any one of the hard drives ever dies, all we have to do is buy a new hard drive, plop it in, and it uses those parity bits to recreate those files on the drive that died. So we don't have to be so concerned about potentially losing all of our files because we're working with, let's say, five drives, and if any one of those would die, it would really suck to lose all of that data. That's where uh, RAID comes in, but with going further than that, ZFS has a lot of great functionality to make sure that none of the files on those drives ever go corrupt. And so it will periodically scan all of them and it'll just look for anything that is referred to as like a bit flip that would typically make a portion of a file or the whole file corrupt. And once you're working with you know, multiple terabytes, there are gonna be some files there that you're never going to look at, you know, maybe every two years, five years, whatever it may be, until you have to go back and, you know, recreate a project with a old file that you were using. And it would suck for one of those files to have a bit flip and a portion of the file be corrupt or the whole file to be corrupt. So that's why I really talk about ZFS and the, the benefits of it and being able to make sure that uh, no files ever go corrupt. For, let's say, a large library, the JFK library, they actually store an archive all of the pictures and videos and everything of JFK during his presidency on uh, TrueNAS. So you can only imagine how much that they believe in this system and its you know robustness and ability to make sure that files don't go corrupt, even those ones that we don't look at on the regular. Uh, but yeah, so that's the system. I had it you know all set up. I then made that into the pool like I was talking about. And then you just have to set up data sets and data sets allow you, it's just like a directory you allow it to add permissions missions to it. And that was one big thing that I didn't like about the Blackmagic cloud store devices is there were no permissions. It was just one password and you had to give it to everyone to access. And that kind of makes things a little less than ideal because then you can see everything that's on the system. And I was actually surprised to see that missing from the Blackmagic devices. And you can do like all different types of shares that you have access to. I believe that the uh, Blackmagic Cloud Store only really had SMB or SIFs. So there wasn't a lot of flexibility, but then you could say, oh, well, the other ones, you could go to the cloud and pull from the cloud. Well, this you can too. And it's not just the two. I mean, this has a whole library of different ones that you can easily push and pull from. 
just very similar to that system. With this, you can also host whatever you want on it. If you wanted to have your own cloud system, think of like Google Drive, where you could share different folders and media and stuff like that, you can do it with this as well. There's a bunch of other stuff here that I really, I personally don't use, but you can have it uh, run a bunch of different things on the system itself. And so there's just a lot of flexibility at any point in time you decide that you grow beyond the size of this. Well, I mean, look at my system. I started with just 12 drives and then got a whole rack. Every once in a while I would have a drive die. I would just get a, a, an alert to my email or at one point I used Amazon SNS and actually had text messages sent to my phone whenever there was an issue with this system. And then I would just go and buy new drives, come, I'd pop it in and be good to go. I had no issues, I had no concerns about making sure that I had to use this particular hard drive or that particular hard drive. All the different vendors kind of recommend specific hard drives to use, but I never had any issues with uh, a drive not actually working that I just randomly bought online. So this is the TrueNAS Mini by iX Systems. But with that being said, that is my little recommendations for storing files securely, especially if you're doing any post-production where you're working with a large amount of files. Until the next one, guys, peace.